Okay, so a little bit different today. Me and Jade are going to try and continue with what we were doing before this whole thing happened. Um, so we're both, I'm, I'm at home, no, we're not both at home, I'm at home, Jade's at her most recent essay development, which looks great. Um, and we're going to, yeah, we're just going to try and crack on. So yep. before this all happened, uh, we had a couple of ideas about content that we were going to release uh, when this all, yeah, when we were going to go into summer, wasn't it? So it was content that we we're going to release for summer one of which was uh, me and the new HMO that I recently bought. And this one, this video is going to be a great video because we're going to talk about doing that HMO on an absolute shoestring of a budget. And Jade's, Jade's even, you, you were laughing at it originally, weren't you, that budget? What do you think well, of it now? <laughs> you said to me, oh, will you design my HMO for, with this budget? And I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. So Jade cops we've... out, yeah. I copped out because I'm just such a massive diva, but um, <laughs> I don't know I am. We, we decided to look at it a bit differently, didn't we, with this, because you we still did. want me to input, don't you, basically? I think you're after some free. Um, so I'm trying, uh, to I'm trying to get some value out of this relationship, to be honest. That's yeah. why. How <laughs> dare you? <laughs> How no. dare you? How rude. Sorry, but the re so the reason is, the main reason is, so everyone, it's very easy to pour in 100 grand into a HMO, 70 grand, 80 grand renovations. It's very easy. Anyone can do that. And it's, um, it's what tends to be done. Someone said something that like resonated with me a couple of months ago. Um, what was it? Not a, oh my God. Something to do with the ego project or something like that. And I was like, yeah, you know what? Vanity, vanity project. Yeah. Vanity project is the word. And I was yeah. like, oh my God. Yeah. Okay. I've never thought about it like that. And, and yeah. I've just never thought about it like that. But anyway, this isn't going to be like that. This is a house that's already in good condition, so it doesn't actually need a lot of that infrastructure that a lot of a lot of these projects need, which costs an awful lot of money. It's a very general spruce up, and I thought it'd be a really nice thing to do for me and you, especially with you being predominantly yeah oh, amazing at, at design. I thought it would be a really good opportunity for us to look at it and try and design this on a shoestring and show people what we've put in, how much it costs, whether it can be done for that kind of money um because if it can't then i'll just have to pay more money and then uh, see the see the start yeah. to end of the process what do you think jade of that? um first of all i want to address the comment about vanity projects yeah because i literally hear the type of person that would say that to you where you would be as well like oh people just do it for vanity projects um and some of the stuff i've done i've done because i know i can use it for marketing and exposure yeah. definitely yeah um, and I've been ha happy to pay a bit more to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, you do get a lot of amazing results off better design places and it's better for people to live in and all those things. So I don't want to go into that. No, I, get, I, get, I agree with you. It's a bit short-sighted, isn't it? It's a short-sighted comment. It is a short-sighted comment. But then on the, on the other, and I'm just being devil's advocate here because I've come from a place where I'd like to think I've spent a lot of money on renovations and things like that. Yeah. Um, it, when you look at things and you put like, like for, okay, let's let, let me just use an example of one of mine, for example, just an example. Yeah. Okay. Um, I used to get, I would get, well, I would always get the walls in the gardens graffitied, spray painted with a local artist. Really, really nice idea. Um, great idea. What actual value does that add to the building? Not really that much. Do the tenants like it? Yeah, they kind of like it. It's a cool thing to have. Mainly I did it for the pictures, like you said, you know, to have to have that for the website it looks really, really smart. But then fast forward uh, a little bit and you look at the figures. So one of them costs £1,500, for example. OK, I'm not going to get £1,500 more of anything out of that, out of doing that. Um, the rents aren't going to increase from doing that or anything like that. That was where I was coming from in terms of that thing. I think um, I'm still for, uh, you know, I would never want to do a beige, boring, just crap project. I would never, ever want to do that. To see the value in design, I see the value in doing that kind of thing, um, and especially for the tenants, for the for the end user, I always see that it's more important for them to have a nice place to live than anything in the world. So I'm 100% for it. It's just when someone said that, that vanity project thing, I'd never really thought about it in that way, um, and, and I'd never really just gave that any kind of consideration. And then when I looked back at like that, for example, the whole graffiti thing, I was like, well, why did I do that? And the answer was because I wanted the pictures. Yeah. So then if I dish, if I just wanted the pictures and it wasn't adding any material value to the project as an investor, is that the correct thing for me to have done? I don't know. Yeah. Don't know. Fair it's enough. just 
yeah, it's just the thing that came came with me, and that's just with my stuff. I'm not trying to say it with anything else. And then when I found this this deal, and we spoke about it originally, um, I thought, what a great kind of experiment to have. Um, all of the last HMOs that I've done, like I said to you, have been well over 100 grand spends. You know, yeah. the 10 beds, things like that. Um, I'm now having to do 20. I'm trying to do a 20 grand spend, which I haven't done since 26, 2016. So, well, what's, included, what's included in a 20 grand spend for you then? Because you've obviously bought this place in like really good condition. Um, so it's not that you're trying to be like super tight and cut corners. No. It's just you don't need to do it, do you? No, exactly. So a lot, like I said, a lot of the stuff is there. It doesn't need doing. So um, I just want to show for 20 grand, I want to show how a fit out can be done, um, which is pretty important. You know, the bed, bedroom's fully finished, furnished. Um, I also want to show, I want to try and get the, the kind of little bit of building works that need doing done as well. So things like fitting the new bathroom, that's, that's one of them. Um, overhauling the kitchen. Bathrooms? How many bathrooms you got? There's two. There's two. Okay. Yeah. There's so two. What do you think you're spending on two bathrooms? What have you budgeted? I would, I would normally spend, I would normally spend on a bathroom around two and a half K. Yeah normally that's what i'd normally spend um one of these is in one of the they, they both need one of them is completely brand new that's the first thing and then the other one is um just needs a few bits and bobs which i've got a couple of pictures i can show you as well um things like the kitchen again kitchen i would probably normally spend um about two thousand on the kitchen um for sort of, the kitchen. just for the units that is just for the units and the worktops and then all the other stuff so you're probably looking at about four with it all fitted and that's not including let's say the plaster and the infrastructure like the the cable you know the, yeah. the wire and all that kind of stuff yeah um so on this one i'm going to try and get that kitchen done for about 1500 quid because the kitchen's already yeah. good and i've got some ideas about how to do that um so it's just trying to do a project on a lesser budget and still make it look really really nice um yeah. and yeah and and then let's see let's see where it goes um I and I you're obviously the queen for that the way we'll approach this project is the way that I would approach it if it was like 120 grand job, um, mm -hmm. less all that part of it. Um, <laughs> and we'll design it as a total piece as opposed to room by room because actually when you look at what, what I do is designing uh, concept and consistency. Yeah. Okay? So every detail is taken care of and it's all up from design. Whereas I think a lot of people um, get confused with that and it's like they're putting stuff in rooms and stuff isn't, an experience stuff doesn't yeah. deliver the results that you want it's just stuff so yeah. well yeah. this why it'd be really that. good as well no 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 that's that sounds fine and that's why it'd be a really good learning curve especially for me because i've mm -hmm. never done anything like that like i have always done the same thing every single room is the same all the furniture is the same i've never developed concept i would just go that looks nice i'd put that in there so it'll be good for people to see your thought process and how you would like yeah. attack something Definitely. like this and then okay. how they could build that up themselves. So let's crack on then. I'll share my screen. Hopefully this works with the um, with the thing. Put it on a little PowerPoint presentation for you so it would look remotely professional. Can you see that? Look at that. Yeah, I can see. Do you like my name? LB Pop. Oh, you cheeky bugger. <laughs> you, you know what you stole that <laughs> from. So, for anyone that's watching, I've recently developed a very important design, which I'll let Jonathan see, and he's clearly nicked the name from. No, I'll, do you know what the LB stands for? Lenton Boulevard? I don't know. Low, low budget. Low budget pop. Oh, mate. <laughs> I thought that would be funny. Anyway, that's the house. That's the front of the house. That's not the house next to it. That's a Victorian house. It's really nice, but I just thought I'd put next to it. But yeah, it's not a looker. Um, it's not really in the best of roads it's yeah anyway right so you want to talk about plans if you like this is what i did i studied three three years for this by the way so i hope you appreciate those plans um these are what the plans look like on the left with with heart ignore all the mental scribbles on there but that's what it currently looks like so we've got two uh two rooms downstairs you've got a reception room on your right as you enter the house and a dining room at the back which leads to the kitchen and then the uh exit if you like onto the garden uh, and then the bathroom so that's the only bathroom on at the minute on the ground floor okay um middle floor you've got front bedroom which is a nice size and then you've got a back bedroom and then on the top floor you've got a front bedroom and just a storage one if you like now i've scribbled on there 
Um, I lost these pans. I should have put the, the, the ones before, but if you see where there's a pink outline, that's kind of new. Am I right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just get moving my, a... my calculator out while you're talking so I can okay. understand the thing. When, see, when I, when I read floor plans, I can't read floor plans without sizes, okay. uh, as in square meterage. So it's just, I literally do read them as well. So for me to really feel, okay, well, this, this space is correct or this layout is correct, I have to really understand what my okay. dealing with. how big they are. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, the... If you, I mean, I know that plan looks strange, the one with hearts on, because the ground floor looks wider than the above. It is the same. So if you think about, you see the dining room is the same yeah. as bedroom three, which is 3.49 by 3.28. So that's the dining room size, yeah? Um, and then there's a few dimensions on it, but some of the front rooms are nice, generous rooms. There's, there's going to be two relatively small rooms in there, um, which are going to be eight square metres, uh, there or thereabouts. And then the other ones are at good sizes. Yeah. Um, Working professionals or students? Professionals. Professionals. Yeah, professionals. Um, it's a bit too far away for students, so I don't think it will work uh, as, uh, as a student one. There used to be a student area. So anyway, the main changes that I'm going to do um, for that budget are that I'm going to put a bathroom on the middle floor, the first floor. Part of bedroom three will become a small bathroom. Um, and then on the top floor, which used to be a storage kind of, it's a really strange thing, it's a storage room, it's got nothing in it, it's, yeah, it's got a window in there, that's being converted, it's an existing room, so it's a very cheap and easy thing to convert. Um, we've only got to insulate the roof, and I've got to change, I think, six or seven joists, dead, dead easy for me to, to do. Um, so that's where the five rooms will come from, and the two bathrooms, so that's what we need for the HMO. Other than that, in terms of layout changes, there's only one tiny change, which is, the storage room under the stairs on the ground floor, which would usually be where you chuck your hoover and all that kind of jazz. Um, because the front bedroom on the ground floor is so small, that's going to become part of the front bedroom. So it's going to be a wardrobe. So I'm just going to flip the door around on there. And that Where's would be... the second bathroom? Am I being really... Oh, it's at the back of the kitchen. Yeah, so right. you've got one on the ground floor in the, behind the kitchen and then you've got one in the middle floor. Yeah, so two for five is, is okay for me. What, do you, what would you normally have? Have you got a kind of limit on what you normally work to? No. Yeah, yeah, but my, my compromise on these floor plans is that bathroom at the back of the kitchen. Yeah. Like if, if if I did a screen on this house, I'd be like, no, I don't want a bathroom downstairs because I don't think it's particularly user friendly to go through. Yeah, a I agree. Let's go through the living room, the kitchen. Especially yeah. Because we've, we've got five beds sharing two, it's not like we've got one that has to use that one. You know, mm, I can obviously yeah. type scenario. It's like we've got potentially like we're probably let, let's be honest, rooms two, three, four, and five are all going to use that middle floor bathroom, aren't they? Yeah, unless they're downstairs. Exactly. Yeah. Or yeah. if it becomes if they all go to work at nine o'clock, for example, then yeah, they'll have to someone will have to yeah. go downstairs to use it. Um, I totally see. I totally see why with the budget that you've got because of where where this house is and the demand and everything, why you're keeping that that configuration that you bought it with with the kitchen into the mm. so in terms of this one are you are you planning to revalue this one i will revalue it there's no rush on it but i will revalue it yeah right. did you want to know yeah. what the kind of numbers would be or no i'm I'm just kind of going through the process in my mind of like for me i'm always going to have to revalue and pull as much out as i can i know this is a bit yeah. different one for you um by not it's going to be a similar down. thing Oh, yeah. I see. Okay, a similar. It's going to be a similar thing. I don't think. Um, I don't You're think it would. Yeah, it's yeah I don't think it'd hit the value too much if the va if the bathroom was moved. Just as yeah. long as it meets that criteria, which is the yeah, HMO yeah. uh, amenity standards, I think we'll be okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping to. I'm hoping to pull out. Well, I can't even remember what it was. I bought it for one four five. I'll spend twenty. I expect it to be between two hundred and two twenty and value. That's what I'm expecting. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. What's that but based that, on, Is that based on yield or is that based on bricks and mortar? No, that's bricks and mortar. Yeah, that's bricks and mortar oh. for this area. So I've got two other ones in this area that were valued pretty much at that level uh, a couple of years ago. So I'd expect it to be at least that. Uh, yeah, especially with what's happened, I would think it's been, it would be at least that, especially if I go to the same bank. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, happy to keep everyone posted on that. 
what's interesting is I know we've we've spoken about this before, haven't we? Like the power of knowing your areas and where you invest. Mm -hmm. Like you're quite confident with this deal because you've you've already done these results twice, so you know yeah. what you're getting. Even in a global exactly. pandemic, you know you know what you're going to get. Yeah. You know between one figure and another, so it's quite a safe for you. It was quite a safe investment, wasn't it? And in terms of uh, that back bathroom being at the back, mm -hmm. what's the configuration configuration of your other two houses in that area? Um, so one of them we've got a, a ground floor bathroom. Um, yeah. One of them's got four. One of them's got four bathrooms. One of them's got three. Um, they are the two that I've got. So I've got one that valued a bit more than this, and that's a bigger house. That's like a wider Victorian house, so like a four point eight meter wide one. And then I've got a one that's about four point two meters wide. So again, a little bit, a little bit wider, but not as tall. Not not tall. Um, this one's ninety six square meters. One of them's one hundred eight, and I think one of them's just about one hundred. So very similar square meterage, but they are yeah. different. The Victorian but different styles of houses with bays. Yeah. They are a little bit different, yeah. That's why I've put this at the 200 to 220 instead of where they were. That's what I'm thinking, yeah. Um, any other comments on them plans? What do you think? Any Anything else? So comments to me on the plans. So second bathroom is the... Um, okay, so if we're looking at bedroom one, um, <laughs> I wouldn't advise putting a bed particularly that constructed in that corner. Okay purely because that's like where everyone's coming in and out of the house and they're going to be banging against that door with the front door if you're in bed people are going to be yeah. there's going to be a lot of footfall up and down that corridor compared yeah. to most spaces in the house so i'd probably be looking at could you potentially imagine let, let let's 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 say you, you're going to build in your joinery either side of your fireplace but only on the right hand side of bedroom one because you've obviously right. done that in rooms above haven't you yeah. So let, let's say um, you built in your joinery and then you pulled your bed against the chimney breast and then put in um, yeah, shelving box okay. style and, you, and you've got additional storage and you've, you've created, essentially you've created yourself a flat wall for the bed to go against. And that's going to be much nicer to open that door and see that feature wall with the bedding and storage than it is to open it up and see a chimney breast with a chest of drawers or whatever. Yeah. Um, I, just, I just always worry about look someone's got to live in this room and that door is like there's a lot of footfall going past that particular wall yeah that makes a lot of sense i've never even thought about it like that um i'm not sure whether the bed would fit that way um i'll have to check that when i'm next there and double check the measurements it's got three it's 3.4 meters wide but you've got your corridor coming off that remember so. how deep are the chimney breasts though do you know uh chimney breasts aren't that deep um, chimney breasts aren't that deep on this one. Um, yeah. I'll, I've got some pictures actually of the room, so probably just 300, 300 mil, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so um, I'm going to some of the chimney breasts. I'm going to be doing some bits on them, but I think that's it for the plans. So um, yeah, interesting about that bit. I will bear that in mind because that is a massive. I've never even thought about that, and that would be a crap place to live, especially if they've got bikes whacking on it and stuff yeah, like that. I mean, never really thought about that. For me, particularly with bedroom one, I mean, yeah, let's say it's it's always the compromise room because it's ground floor. Yeah, it's got going past it. You really want to make sure that you deliver on bedroom one because it is compromised compared to the rest of the house. Yeah. Um, obviously, I appreciate that you're going under the stairs, aren't you, in that room and putting in additional storage. Mm -hmm. um, that's what WD means, doesn't it? Um, yeah. Wardrobe. And then mm -hmm. obviously what that would then be able to do for you from a layout perspective is on the left hand side of the door, you could put your chest of drawers and whatever. So you're not walking into all bit, bits and bobs. Yeah. So for me, I always want to make the best impression. So door opens, bam, wherever possible. Um, and that's kind of like sold it. Cool. That makes sense. No, that's really, really good space. feedback, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. That okay, makes, so, makes loads of sense. Rest of the layout, I'd probably be looking to do the same in bedroom two. So I'd be spinning the bed round in front of that chimney breast, which okay. you've obviously put in there that you're putting in the joinery anyway. Yeah. Um, Even if it's got a nice chimney on, a nice fireplace. Oh, it has. Okay. Well, yeah. Fair enough then. Yeah. The, the um, two and five have nice chim uh, nice fireplaces. Right. Um, then the bed. Like Victorian right. fireplace. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's. Um, the number three kind of has one, but that's probably going to have to come out. Um, and number one has a horrible one that's going to move anyway. So cool. Okay. I like your idea with one that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and I think there's not really, the problem is because 
obviously the budget and because of its layout, there isn't really a massive amount of stuff you can do to it. Um, what do you That's think about the bathroom? Window, isn't it? What we've just described is quite an easy win to create something which actually functions a lot better for somebody. Massive. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Honestly, I've never even thought about that being that having all the footfall. Never, never even considered it. What about um, in terms of bathroom layout on the middle? Do you think that's the right place for the bathroom to go in the middle floor? Um, the first floor? Well, looking at bedroom three, I mean that is going to be as tight as hell. That room, isn't it? That is bang on eight square meters. That, that yeah. the way that that's been built, I, and that is that stud is kind of up now. But it's that is yeah. I couldn't see any other way. I explored a load of different uh on suite layouts and that's yeah. the smallest i've got which is 1.6 wide by 1.8 deep and that's what the smallest we've been able to get away with so it comes in at about i think it's two point something 2.33 or 2.5 i can't remember what it is now square but it's a really small bathroom it's a non-suite size bathroom that is effectively yeah. um so yeah so that's obviously put a quadrant shower in there what are you looking at putting yeah. in there so, so we've got a quadrant oh what sorry Say seven hundred. <laughs> no, even I'd I'd be touching each side, wouldn't I? Yeah. That's a, I think that's a seven sixty we looked at, we drew out seven sixty. Yeah. We've got the door opening and the towel red behind the door, if you can see my little squiggle. Um yeah. the the toilet on the other side and then either a corner sink or a little vanity unit with a um with the one cupboard below it. You know what I'd be doing to that space as well? I'd be uh tiling the entire room. Okay. Um, why why do you say that just for like because of the because moisture build up and all that? It's compromised. You want it to feel yeah. premium, you want it to feel small. I'm not talking about tiles that cost a ton of money, just something, yeah. you know, even if you kind of tiled inside the shower and then drop the tiles halfway down all the way round, tiled yeah. and then painted above because you you've got to make it a bit more jazzier than what it actually it. is. Got to sell, sell it, it, yeah. Yeah, I get that. Always, always with 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 anything, you you know, there's always some compromise when we're doing these projects. And it, what we've got to do is, is kind of get people to not see the compromises by, yeah, yeah by giving a balance yeah. of notes. So okay, this isn't ideal room space, but you've got this wicked bathroom that overlooks the garden. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really cool. Teach me a thing or two, aren't you? Um, um Bosch. Oh my god. <laughs> You're literally right. ripping me off. What? You are so, literally so, but, ripping me off. Oh my god, that's no. my colour palette. How dare you? I oh. put this together today. Is this a joke? <laughs> no, this is not a joke. You don't what's use the, IKEA, that's from IKEA. What? That's from oh my god. I know what it is, Jonathan. I have it in all. Oh, I'm that I'm that pain. Do you, know, do you know what's funny is then that must be subliminally because I made a per I've one hundred percent tried not to look at your stuff so I wouldn't get dragged into it. So I can't do anything too industrial like Jade. So so just so you know, I want this to be kind of Victorian. I want it to look Victorian. So Victorian. Victorian, thought you'd like that. And also I didn't try and rip you off. I just you obviously have got great taste and I've just gravitated towards the great taste. All right. Um no, these pictures, someone that I um Someone I mentor sent me this house that's just absolutely sick. So I thought I'd put these pictures of the house in. Um, and everyone's doing, everyone's colouring half walls in. So just where, can you see, hold on a sec. Like that, I like that one. But the, the, the half walls thing is so great because it's so visual and it's mm. just so perspective. And if you're not doing half walls, where the hell are you at? Yeah, I'm not doing, I've not done any, to be honest, I've used the same colour forever, which was uh, Cornforth White or another Faro colour. Um, I used a feature colour of Railings or Hague Blue, um, and then that was it, yeah. So I just, that's that here, by the way, that's what this space looks like. It's already got this built-in cupboard. Um, I wanted to rip the wall down and get the exposed brick on this left-hand side. Uh, TV there, your little hearty colour thing. And that was it. Okay, let it. me just let me just take Slightly it all in. Slightly dicey chairs. So, yeah, you take that, take it in. Let me know what you think. But the IKEA chair, that's from IKEA, that chair. Funny that I put a picture of the back of it <laughs> instead of the front. <laughs> but it looks it looks good from both angles. <laughs> um, this is from Made, which everyone knows about regularly in the auction. By the way, I know we're doing this on a budget, so I know, I know it. 
I know where to get that from without going Jump to eye. Yeah. Oh, do you? You know to get that yeah. that same one. Oh, okay. That well, that I, that color. I've, you know, oh, I'm really? sat in the, in the assay at the minute. I've got that, and I think it's is it green here. I've got it in green and the chair. Have you got it? And okay. You got this chair as well. No, not that chair. And, oh, oh no. I was going to say, I definitely have ripped you off then. Um, no, so yeah, this is that, a that, that, that chair. That chair I've got in the co working centre, and I've got one similar one. as well. From, yeah really smart i had a really sat sassy one but it was like 600 quid so i got rid of it um this is in a german uh co-working place and that's cornforth white with railings that's kind of cool those are the colors that i like isn't it? that's just that's nice a isn't it yeah it's very very clean um all i'm, all I'm gonna say about that this um uh, and this is a lesson that i've had to learn myself over the past year or so but be really careful where you use that dark in that room in that middle living okay. room like that so I've yeah. got a couple of projects where I've I've overdosed in Article Four on dark colours in the in the, and I just think oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. But what saved me is that you know where you've got your kitchen access to your kitchen there we've put a RSJ in and opened it up so it's oh, okay. Open. Yeah, whereas you're not going to do that to this one. So no, I think that would be nice. Yeah. I think just be, you know, you know, like on your visual on the right hand side, you've obviously you've got something there which is all the way around in that colour. I think yep. I'd be doing the chimney breast wall in this room. You'd be doing that one block colour. Sorry. Yeah, not not just the chimney breast, but the whole entire wall, yeah. I don't oh, know yeah. if I'd be wrapping it around in fifty fifty because it might make it look a little bit too dark. Oh, I see what you're saying. So okay, just just this part maybe. But, but remember, remember, what do we see when the door opens? That is the most yeah. vital visual. Okay. Okay. So we're going to, yeah, we're when we look in. The red, the red brick, is this a wallpaper, I'm assuming? No, 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 because with this, it's a Victorian house. It should yeah. have really, I've, I've done this a fair few times, it should have some nice brick there. We're going to test it out, pass, patch test it. On the left hand yeah. side, <clears throat> it will be a very cheap thing for me to do just to pull it down. I won't be spending any money on pointing or anything like that. I'll just clean it yeah. up and just leave it there so that's to the left there's already a really nice um storage kind of thing built in you know like the victorian larder bit that's already there so that's going to stay there um and yeah that was that really didn't want to put too much just in going it. back to the brick thing so i've done that exact same process in um i did that in b9 in the loft we were lucky because we're not always allowed to do that in loft conversions and then also um in this place in ruby three i've done it in the living room and the dining room so we've just literally hacked off and gone okay what have we got yeah. we'll go with that cleaned it up a little bit and then gone with that um and oh, oh, the the chimney breasts here so some of it had to be reinstated on the arch where the keystone is but yeah. um yeah that's that's a way nicer idea than uh, faux wallpaper <laughs> i've got a couple with the wallpaper and it looks okay at the start, but after a bit, my God, it's a train wreck because people it's stop space, it. it. Yeah, you know, it is, um, a, re a red brick wall is a red brick wall. It's actually what I wanted to do in the bedroom of this place, but it's just the budget wouldn't allow the brick slips to be able to do it. Up yeah. yeah. Um, so, hold on, sorry. Okay, okay don't worry. <laughs> look, so that's the living room. So in terms of that then, so in terms of concept, obviously you've got your, your, your simple colour palette. So you've got three colours in there. You've got an off-white, a dark grey and yellow. Yep. Um, and red brick to bring in your warmth and your industrial kind of twist that you like to put in everything. Um, what else yellow in it, haven't we? Yeah. What, what in terms of like artworks and stuff like that, what's your thoughts? I haven't, I haven't really properly considered that. I, I normally use this guy We've got really cool pictures but other than that i never really consider the artwork so in here i've left it really basic that's something that's lacking okay keep going then and we can chat about that okay well that was just lounge so i've done each room like that yeah. oh hold on a sec just clicked on this oh wrong one. No, that's right sorry my bad there we go so bedrooms now this isn't the bedroom plan but these are just what the bedrooms currently look like um which you can see those chimp and then fireplaces that i mentioned now uh, this one, this one, and this one. Um, these are the colours that I really like. What? Sorry. It's hilarious looking at this because it's like <laughs> studio green. That's what I use. Hey blue. That's Do you use I that use. one? Yeah, oh, hey blue. It? That's what. That's what I'm sat in front of now. Hey blue. That's what I've got in my. Do you know my, you know my to let my fancy buy to let? That's what's in the. Yeah, yeah. Room. In fact, I've just used that in Portland as well. Just used that. Do you like hey this blue. one? Never used bone. 
That's nice. I like that. I've never used We've got it. that on our hallway. And it, it looks like that. magnolia, doesn't it? It kind yeah, of looks magnolia like, but it's not. In One True Hipster, I might yeah. have used it. In, it's like a green yeah. colour. I can't Okay, oh, I, I've never used any greens. I didn't even know if that looked green. I mean, it doesn't look green on my screen. I just picked the darkest yes. green on the Farrow and Ball one. Yeah, is that yeah. what it's when it's painted? It's yeah. black. Oh, okay, so, that, so yeah, I've used so studio green. I've used uh, up until Portland, and I'll tell you why I've used it in Portland. I've used it just on woodwork and banisters okay. because it's so intensely dark. It looks black, but it kind of shines green, so it's brave okay. colour. In yeah. Portland, we've got two gigantic bedrooms at the front on the on the kind of that's the seven bed commercial conversion. Yeah, that kind of I've got two windows in, and they're like sixteen square meters each. So I've yeah. I've done studio green walls in there because it's they're that big and bright they can take yeah. it. But be very very careful with that color on walls in small bedrooms because that's going to just make it shrink. Cool. Okay, I'll probably change that then. That was just the darkest green I could find. Um, that's the bedroom that I really like um, which I don't know what colour that is would you say that's like a railings colour or, railing, or something yeah, yeah okay yeah. so not not a colour that I, I was going to pick I thought that looked like absolute black but I wanted to do that in the living room um, but yeah I just like that it's a solid block colour and then there's some snazzy furniture um, that's, that's all I liked really what do you think I about the floor well, one second, let's stick to the, the paint. I just want you to be really careful about using that colour on, on lots of walls in small bedrooms because it's, okay. you know, it's, it's not a, it's not nice. So you, you don't think, you don't think it's like a cosy thing. You think it just feels like it's restrictive no. or whatever. Okay. Put okay. It, put it, put it, let, let me, let me, let me put it this way for you. If you was on lockdown for two months, would you want to be in a black bedroom? That's no. Eight probably go wild no i wouldn't do yeah, that well, but what, what what would work in there in an eight square meters bedroom is if you 50 50 the back wall okay yeah so you, you yeah. need white to be definitely in a smaller hmo white needs to be a dominant color because okay. we need to put as much light and in and energy into there as we can and not just make everything dark because it looks cool okay that's so that, that's pretty interesting not something i mean i used to do I, i'd normally do cornforth white that's what i'd normally use um and then yeah so okay so like a nice like cornforth white with then a 50 50 would you just do one wall as 50 50 or you just I would, yeah. just yeah. the one the majority, yeah, just... the majority of my walls and all my projects are white so generally what i tend to do is i'll always look at um the back wall where the bed is that's the feature point imagine if you're going into a hotel that's where it's all singing or dancing and then I'm always going to look at the window wall as well, because that's, again, usually the second strongest visual reference in the room. Yeah. Um, I've done this. I've painted things too dark and I've regretted it after. OK. No, that, honestly, Joe, that makes complete sense, especially yeah. with, with small rooms. Um, I get that. Um, I quite like the Victorian look of that, you know, with the... Um, I forgot what that's called now. What's it called when they have that bit of wood there? Like a, uh, like a data rail. Yeah, I kind of like that. That's a cool idea and a very cheap thing to do. Um, I know we mentioned your wooden panelling in the background. That's probably not a cheap thing, but that looks really, really smart in Victoria. Oh, you now. know what, actually, the wooden panelling, I mean, um, you're looking at materials cost of about £100 a wall and then the labour cost. So, you know, if you've got an amazing joiner like I have, um, yeah. he bangs them walls out like rapid style now. So it's probably costing me... <laughs> I don't know. Same maybe but maybe 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 each wall's costing me hundred and fifty, two hundred pounds. You know, you can do a couple of yeah. walls in a day, but he's used to doing them and he's speedy at them. But the individuality of that is really strong, yeah. isn't it? Oh, it's massive. Yeah, it looks amazing, and it's fully bespoke for your for your room. Yeah. It looks wicked. So, um, so Looking at bedrooms, so let, let me throw something else back at you before you take me through everything. What I do when I design is I say, right, okay, I've got five bedrooms. Uh, I've got one look and feel, and I want a combination. This is how I start to break down what goes where, because there's a ton of stuff that goes into HMO design. So I've got five bedrooms, so that means that two of them need to be wallpapered on the back, three of them need to be painted. Okay. How how come how come it like has like you do it that way? How come you have two as wallpaper? It's, it's so so when we present the entire house online or for marketing or whatever, you've got a real strong variation, but actually. Yeah. 
it's it's a it's a good way early on to say to yourself right okay i'm only having so many of that so i only need to find so many of that or make so many decisions about that and then right, it's not okay. such an overwhelming process of oh what am i going to put here what am i going to yeah. put there if you kind of say to yourself right bedroom one wallpaper bedroom three wallpaper then then it takes the pressure off the decision almost yeah that's like programmed in that that's going to happen there and you just got to find the wallpaper at that point i get that you okay. can also think about if you've got bedrooms that sit in the eaves and loft yeah that's quite a like awkward space so actually if you can put a print on there that's going to open that up and make it feel a bit cooler okay and if you've got a nice back wall which is a nice you know square or a rectangle that's going to lend itself to a 50 50 wall because it's the, sh the shape of it mm -hmm. Yeah. That type of thing. So I, when I'm, I'm looking at each room and what the, the attributes of the room are, then I'm, I'm making the decisions step by step like that, as opposed to like going into each room individually and going, what's this room going to be? What's this room going to be? I'm looking at it yeah. more from a high level perspective of right. I need so many of these, so many of these. It so makes it a okay. simpler process. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent makes makes it so much easier. Um, okay, well, I've never even thought about that. I, and again, because of the budget, I was just going to rely on paint on this one. Um, I've experimented with, with wallpaper and all kind of stuff. I'll give that some more thought. Uh, but yeah, let, we'll figure that out. With um, with furniture, do you then, I'm guessing you do your furniture layout and then you pick the furniture. How do you go about the process of picking your furniture? Um, oh, so... So obviously what you've what you're showing me today is like sketches of each of the rooms, okay? Mm. And you're dealing with each of the rooms one by one. That's the opposite to how I, how I do it. So how okay. I do it, I'm creating the look and the feel up front and identifying okay. what all of the key parts are. So already I know what type of flooring I'm going to have, what type of wallpaper I'm going to have because I've already identified a selection of them in the process. Okay. so I've, in that development process of the concept i've already said this is what i'm going to do so like for me on a basic level for you doing this you need to create your general look and feel and then once you've created your general look and feel you can then that will dictate to you what your furniture needs to look like what your wallpaper needs to look like and so on and so forth does that make sense yeah 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 it's conceptual isn't it instead of this is a bit more exactly. uh this is exactly. a bit more detail oriented um, maybe yeah. I did too much for you. Maybe that happened. Maybe I actually did too much. I mean, you um, have done a ton of work. I, honestly, this just copy and paste in. This took me an hour this morning. I thought I'd blow your mind with some amazing PowerPoint. Um, bathrooms. So bathroom that we already have is on the right hand side. Again, I just want it to be Victorian and it needs to be cheap. So I'm going to be doing Metro tiles. And I'd quite like to do something nice with the tiles, which is why I put that picture in the bottom left. Um, yeah. Easy really, cheap cheap easy thing to do um and it would be nice and bright because it's not one of them's not gonna have a window so it kind of made sense to do it that way um so yeah. in terms of flooring what are we having yeah. on the floor so you're having floor tiles now you're not they're tiles yeah no that they, they are going to be tiles yeah um yeah they're really cheap to be honest they're super cheap yeah. they're on offer as well at the minute so really really cheap I've to, used to that do that. quite a few times and they're, have you? they're nice the yeah. nice like uh the three thirties by three thirties. Yeah, good size, aren't they? Yeah, yeah really nice they're size. They're a good size and they feel really premium and you get that yeah. kind of reaction of oh wow, Victorian tiles. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's everything not... that you put in there is spot on. Cool. That gets the jade thumbs up, that one does. That's so fair. kitchen, okay. There's my horrible kitchen on the left. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm lucky here, so people watching probably aren't going to be in a, in a position where they can do this, but they will be able to have access to it, just not as cheaply as I can. I can get this resprayed, um, like professionally resprayed, a friend of mine does yeah. it, um, and I'm going to hopefully, depending on what you say, uh, I'm going to spray it a blue like this, um, and then I've used brass handles before. It's already got handles on, which are the T-bars, so I've got to replace them because obviously you can't really do, um, I can't leave it. I can't change the size of the handles is what I'm getting at because it's already got drill holes. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm going to put the same saying back, but just brass. And then I'd really like to do a, a nice tile like that on the top, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, yeah, that was that. What do you think about a dark kitchen in that space? 
Um, what what I think is, I think you need to, obviously that blue kitchen's stunning, but I think you need to go back to the drawing board and come up with the design first and then go back and ask yourself if the blue kitchen's what you want to put in, if it okay. fits what, what, what your ideas are. Because at the minute you're, de you're designing each room by each room. And if you really yeah. want to create uh, something that feels premium, even on a budget, you've got to design as total space. Okay. Because then it becomes cohesive. Then it becomes okay. premium, even on a budget. So I would just go back and, you know, get yourself we, we a mood board on PowerPoint and go, right, I really like this image, this image and this image. And then get rid of the stuff that's not fitting in with all the images. And then in the end, you're going to have, you're gonna have, you know, you know what type of flooring's going in there. Mm -hmm. um, you know you want your darks in there. Define your colour palette and then ask yourself the same thing about the kitchen. Okay. All right. That'll be good. Um, perfect. I think that's it. That is all I've put together. That was me thinking what a mood board was, by the way. Let me get this. Uh, let me stop screen share. Um, yeah. That was me trying to do a mood board. Did you like well, that? What I should do is share, share one of my documents. With you. No, don't. <laughs> no, it's fine. You don't need to show us that. You need to show us no, one of them impressive yeah, ones. No. <laughs> but, but, but don't forget, you know, this is, this is, this is, this is my background. This is what... Or domain. Yeah. No, honestly, as well, that's, that's massive. I mean, I've never had, I've never spoke to anyone about any bits like that before. Um, mm. So yeah, you you smashed it there. You you taught me quite a few bits and bobs. Even in I don't even think it's been God knows how it's been about thirty minutes actually going through that. Um, yeah, mega mega kind of value in that with with just even just a tiny thing like that bloody bed orientation. Never really even thought about that. Um, and I would I will look at it as a whole. I've always done it this, the way you you just said. So I've always done well. This room it would look nice to have that there. I've never really thought about it as a holistic That's because, package. That's if you if you it's too overwhelming to think about it as a total thing either yeah yeah sorry i was it's, checking it was still recording yeah it's too overwhelming to think about it as a total thing it's like oh i can't to think of it like that so if i go into each room and design each room um then i know i can handle that, that thought yeah. process but yeah, if yeah. you want into a bit more then yeah that's what proper design is, which obviously yeah. when you see it, you know, don't you? We all do where we go, that's a proper job. And I'm not yeah. saying yours aren't a proper job. It's just that this exercise is about challenging, you know, the way that you, you've done it historically. 100%. I, I've hand, hands up. I've definitely been doing it wrong. That was, yeah, that was how the professionals do it. Um, no, that was massive. That was great. Thanks for that, Jade. I really appreciate your time on that's that. That's right. Um, and when, and when, and when you think about the vanity project thing, this isn't about vanity, is it? This is about not the process, all. about selecting. Yeah. It's yeah. not because you want you want to have put on some great content on Instagram. It's like you've got to go through this process. Mm. Why make it so hard on yourself? Do all the design up front, yeah. almost, and then tackle it. And then always have that that you know that even if it's just one mood board, but it's it's defined look and feel have that and then when you start to find yourself going oh but i like this but is it on there no well it, you can't use it then because it yeah. won't be cohesive yeah that's a wicked way to think about it like the process of elimination yeah. there if it's not on the board it's not coming in simple not as in the color palette where, yeah. where's it coming from do you know yeah. what i mean just think about it like that the pharaoh and ball <laughs> that's where everything comes from um wicked <laughs> That, that project that I showed you the other day, the one, the one that we cannot talk about right now. No, we're not talking about it. I had to get jazzy, you know, and go, go somewhere else and paint. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> I was like, I can't, I can't just put that in there. It's not quite right. And I had to kind of second guess it because I can't go into like B&Q and get a valve spa, like, you know, swab yeah. or anything. Like that. Oh, God. I'm going right out of comfort zone again. <laughs> Gamble. <laughs> Literally. Oh, bloody hell. There's, um, I used one a while ago and yeah, I used it once and then just went straight back to Faro. So everything has just been picked off that. That's the only thing I ever used. It must be so hard for you guys, like just looking at different, all these different colours and stuff and knowing how the colours go together and stuff. It's just crazy. You know, That's why all mine is the same. But, but, but all mine are the same. It's the same colour palette. It's the same mood okay. board. The, 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 I evolve it each time, so nothing's dating. Um, yeah. But I'm never working with more than four to five colours on a project, never. 
yeah. Never. Then you get that like, consistency for as well. Like that, like I'm, I can't because how can I control that? Everything you see me do, like this, my B space colors that I use on the interiors is obviously like you know, let's say black, white, uh, mm -hmm. yellow, pink, and green. Yeah, my colors. Yeah, it's, it's not a lot. Um, no. Yeah, it's just, just the execution. Yeah, wicked. Oh, that's awesome. I think that pretty much ticks everything off. Is there anything else you want to go over or anything like that? No? No. Wicked. My mega call. Okay, well, I'm gonna, let me stop this then. And then um, that's that for this one. We'll keep you posted on it. Um, I'll show you what actually happens to it at the end when Jade walks around it and rips it to shreds <laughs> um, later on. But um, yeah, if you've got any questions or anything like that, leave it in the comments. And, um, and yeah, we're going to try and put some more stuff out for you soon. Thanks for watching. Cheers, guys. Thank you for watching, guys. If you like what we're doing, please like and subscribe to the channel. If you want us to talk about anything specifically, then pop that in the comments below and we'll get back to you. We'd love it if you'd come over to Instagram and give us a follow and say, hi, I'm B Space, and you are? Jonathan M. Iwanu. Thanks. <laughs>